Our universe is immense, and in it, there are a considerable number of massive objects. There are giant planets, stars, in comparison with which our sun is just a grain of sand. Galaxies, clusters, and superclusters of galaxies, walls, and voids. This succession can continue, increasing in size and mass. And at any given point of this progression, you can find its accepted record holder, up to this point anyway. In this video, we will introduce you to the largest galaxies in the observable universe. So, fifth place in our galactic parade is taken by 3C348 of Hercules A, a yellowish galaxy with a diameter of 1.5 million light years at a distance of about 2 billion light years. Hercules A is one of the brightest extragalactic radio sources. The galaxy is about 1,000 times more massive than the Milky Way, and Hercules A contains a black hole that is also 1,000 times more massive than the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Unless you are a professional astronomer, you are unlikely to notice anything unusual in the photographs of the galaxies of Hercules A taken with the optical imaging. Even in the best of the shots, you will see an outwardly ordinary elliptical star system, of which thousands can be found in the vastness of space. But take your time. Observations have shown that Hercules A is very far from the Earth. In addition to that, with the development of radio astronomy, further observations have shown that by radio waves, the galaxy looks completely different than it does in optical images. The radio waves do not emanate from the galaxy itself, but from two powerful jets shooting out from its center. In optical imaging, they are completely invisible. But then, by radio waves, they show a complex structure. The next galaxy is IC1101, which for a long time was considered the largest in the observable universe, is rightfully in fourth place and resides in the massive cluster of galaxies Abel 2029 that is located on the very edge of the constellation of Virgo at a distance of 1.04 billion light-years from the Earth. The galaxy has a diameter of approximately 6 million light-years. If we compare it with the Milky Way, then it is 60 times larger and 2,000 times heavier. Had IC1101 been in the location of the Milky Way, it would have swallowed up the large and the small Magellanic clouds, the Andromeda Nebula and the Triangulum Galaxy. Before you is UGC 9555, a huge galaxy that occupies third place. This galaxy is located directly in the galaxy triplet system named UGC 9555. The cluster is located in the direction of the constellation Camelopardalis, a distance of 820 million light years from the Earth. This enormous star studded island is just over 8 million light years in diameter. At the moment, the mass of this radio galaxy is quite difficult to estimate, but experts believe that it is no less than 65 to 75 trillion times the mass of the Sun. Like most huge galaxies, UGC 9555 attained such a size and acquired such a considerable mass due to the fact that it relentlessly consumed neighboring galaxies that dwelled close to the inhabitants of the cluster. Behold! Almost the leader, but still in second place in our intergalactic battle today, 3C236, and it's 15 million light years away. It is a radio galaxy of the Fanarov and Riley second class. It ranks among the largest of the known radio galaxies and is located in the direction of the constellation Leo Minor. The galaxy features a double double radio morphology, consisting of a giant relic source and an inner, more compact radio source. A recent episode of star formation closer to the core can be associated with the event that led to the reignition of radioactivity. And here, finally, we have reached the leader for the moment, the galaxy Alcyoneus. In a new study, it became clear that its length is already equal to more than 16 million light years and it is located at a distance of 3 billion light-years from the Earth. 
researchers encountered the cosmic supergiant with the help of the so-called radio lobes, which are inherent to all massive galaxies, with the inclusion of our Milky Way. The existence of similar lobes on the Alcyoneus galaxy was able to be detected using the low-frequency array inferometric network consisting of 20,000 radio antennas mounted on 52 platforms in various European countries. The discovered galaxy turned out to be a genuine supergiant, the likes of which has never been detected in the entire history of space observation. There is a supermassive black hole in the center of Alcyoneus, which slows down the formation of new stars and thus greatly affects the life cycle of the galaxy as a whole. Sometimes this causes a violent spectacle. The black hole, absorbing material from the giant disk around it, can form two jets that eject fuel for new stars from the galaxy at a speed of close to the speed of light. These plumes or jets travel huge distances and then turn into giant radio-emitting lobes. During this process, the stellar dust is heated to such a degree that it dissolves into plasma and begins to radiate in the radio frequency range. The galaxy is also impresses with its other characteristics, which researchers have been able to measure thanks to the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. For example, the supermassive black hole at the center of Alcyoneus is 400 million times more massive than our Sun and the mass of the entire galaxy is estimated to be 240 billion times the mass of our Sun. As you can see, the majority of radio galaxies have gigantic dimensions, but why all of them aren't huge remains a mystery. It's believed that these giants are the oldest radio galaxies that have existed long enough, perhaps several hundred million years, for their radio jets to grow to an enormous size. If this is true, then there must be many more giant radio galaxies that are known today. And the discovery of similar giants and their study helps determine the evolution of galaxies in the first place. After all, we are talking about a powerful galactic structure that originated from what was at a one time a completely commonplace galaxy.
104, the Sombrero Galaxy, NGC 4594, is perhaps one of the most familiar galaxies besides the Andromeda. You've most probably seen it in astronomy books. It got its name from its resemblance to the Mexican Sombrero hat. The galaxy is visible almost edge-on and there is a lane of dark dust running across the entire observable disk. M104 is located at a distance of 29.3 million light-years and in size is approximately 50,000 light-years across. Interestingly, the Sombrero is a double galaxy. It's a spiral galaxy located within an elliptical galaxy. Well, but what takes the cake is the galaxy's strong emission of radiation, which according to many astronomers is caused by a supermassive black hole in the core. But why did the Sombrero galaxy take on this shape? Was it always like this? Let's get to the bottom of it. This floating ring the size of a galaxy is the Sombrero itself, the largest object in the constellation of Virgo. It got its name because in the visible range it appears as a luminous cloud with an elliptical shape and an edge of dark matter. This image reveals the infrared glow recorded by the Spitzer Space Telescope. The image was digitally sharpened and overlaid with an optical image obtained from the Hubble telescope. Judging by the pictures, the Sombrero galaxy really doesn't look like others. This view of the galaxy really does resemble a hat, which is why it was called the Sombrero galaxy. Where is that Mexican who could give us the answer? It looks like he's hiding in the nebula. Well, let's try to figure it out. Now then, according to modern classification as we understand it, the formation of galaxies is considered to be a natural stage in the evolution of the universe that occurs under the influence of gravitational forces. Logic suggests that at the initial stage of the evolution of galaxies, particles of dust and gas began grouping together, fusing, colliding and consequently clusters appeared, which subsequently developed into something massive. The variety of galaxy shapes is associated with a variety of initial conditions for the formation of the galaxies. The accumulation of hydrogen gas within the confines of these clusters became the first stars. But how come the Sombrero doesn't look like any of the categories of galaxies? At least that's how it seems at first glance. The fact is, straight away this object consists of two different types of galaxies, most likely an elliptical and a spiral. And unlike in any other instances, their interlacing is incredibly well balanced and accordingly looks so beautiful. In addition, the Sombrero is oriented edgewise to the observer on Earth, so astronomers find it difficult to categorically determine the shape of this cluster as a whole. Perhaps from the other side of the galaxy the Sombrero looks completely different. But there is a second, no less curious hypothesis, which suggests that about 9 billion years ago, the accumulation of gas the cluster received from intergalactic space caused a hat of galactic proportions to be formed. Be that as may, before us is a mystery and one of the most beautiful of the galaxies. What do we know about it? The Sombrero is located a distance of 28 million light-years from the Earth in the constellation of Virgo and is moving away from us at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per second. Despite being such a large distance away, astronomers first discovered this object back in the 18th century. Its bright radiance which emanates out from the galaxy for millions of light-years all around helped them to detect it. The Sombrero galaxy, or M104, has a colossal mass. Indeed, according to some estimates, the total weight of this space object is equal to the mass of 800 billion of our suns. Such a massive weight is due to the presence of the countless stars in the galaxy, as well as the vast ring of dust that encircles it around the perimeter. The structure of the Sombrero galaxy, even today, doesn't cease to amaze both amateurs and professionals of astronomy. What's happening in the center of this spiral galaxy? In the image, the distinct dark lanes of dust are visible, as well as the bright halo of the stars and globular clusters. The blue emission of the galaxy is caused by the glow of the massive hot young stars that populate it. 
the abundance of gas and dust clouds, and the presence of bright blue giants speaks of the active star formation processes that is taking place in the Sombrero galaxy. Looking closely at the central component in this photo, you can see many pinpoint sources of light, which are the globular clusters. The spectacular dust rings of M104 hide a large number of the young and bright stars and have a very complex structure that is still not fully understood by astronomers. The very central portion of the Sombrero galaxy radiates in all ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum. There is evidence indicating that at the center of the Sombrero galaxy is a supermassive black hole with a mass equal to one billion suns. This information has been confirmed by data from the Hubble Space Telescope, which has recorded the extremely fast rotation of the stars in the center of Sombrero. Also, the central portion of the galaxy is emitting an abnormally large quantity of X-rays, which may also indicate the presence of a black hole at its core. If desired, it can even be seen with an amateur telescope. It's sufficient to point it at the southern edge of the Virgo cluster and the galaxy will appear right before your eyes. Its apparent magnitude is 8, so it won't be difficult for you to locate it, but you won't be able to see all the beauty in great detail. We can only imagine how many amazing worlds of the many distant galaxies and systems could possibly be out there. visit the seven most incredible worlds that were found and confirmed by the TESS telescope in 2022. 
The first amazing world was detected near the star HD A3443. To be precise, it's a new giant exoplanet. The newly discovered exoplanet with endless storms has a mass of one and a half times the mass of Jupiter. Its orbit is characterized by a semi-major axis of eight astronomical units and an eccentricity of 0 0.76. A year on the planet lasts 22 Earth years. Accordingly, HD A3443c turned out to be an unusually cold exoplanet, known to be distant from its star, and the entire system turned out to be one of a kind that contains two giant exoplanets in completely different orbits. In all likelihood, this kind of a configuration of planets may have been formed due to a gravitational scattering event in the past, which made HD A3443b a short period planet and threw HD A3443c into its current wide orbit. It is possible that there may have been a third exoplanet in the system, which was thrown right out of it in the past. Second place is 55 Cancri E. Well, if the previous representative is likely to be extremely cold, then the climate of this next exoplanet will seem like a genuine resort because here there is continuous sunbathing. Get acquainted with 55 Cancri E, the planet that orbits so close to its sun-like star that it is covered in fire, its surface temperature reaching 2436 degrees Celsius. This exoplanet is located a distance of 50 light years from the Earth and is a so-called super-Earth, a class of planets whose mass is several times greater than that of the Earth and is not similar to any of the worlds that are known to us. The surface of this hot world is covered with lava and is perpetually burning. One year on it lasts only 18 hours, but that is quite enough to get a good 10, while the gravitational pull keeps one hemisphere in the light and the other in never-ending darkness. Third place is taken by the planet Gliese 667c, which is one of the three exoplanets orbiting an M-type red dwarf star. The star is located a distance of 23 light years from the Earth in the constellation of Scorpio. The planet completes one revolution around its star every 28 days. The most interesting thing is that the discovered exoplanet is situated in the habitable zone of its star. We mustn't forget an air mattress, since in all likelihood, ahead of us is an ocean planet. It is highly likely that storms are raging on it, as well as phenomena associated with large volumes of liquid and wind. Life on the planet is also possible, but it would be completely different from ours, and even sweethearts can turn out to be aggressive. Since planet Gliese 667c is a super-Earth with a mass of 3.7 times the mass of the Earth, the gravity will also be much stronger. If you visit the planet, your weight will be significantly greater than it is on the Earth. The fourth planet about which we speak is TIC 172900988b, orbiting two stars. To date, only 14 of this kind of circumstellar exoplanet have been discovered. Worlds orbiting two stars are also known as circumferential planets, because they orbit a double star, or stars orbiting around each other. This new world is a gas giant, the size of our own Jupiter, but far more massive, it's 2.96 the masses of Jupiter. It revolves with an orbital period of 200 days around two sun-like stars, which in turn revolve around each other. High-resolution images in the near-infrared portion of the color spectrum reveal the signal indicating the possible presence of a satellite planet in orbit that is 2.6 times greater than the size of planet Earth. It's a sort of Pandora's box. We absolutely have to take a peek in there. Planet number 5 is Kepler 1649c, which is located 300 light years away from the Earth and is only 1.06 times larger than it. This rocky planet is situated within a habitable zone. 
The planet is positioned close to the star. A year on it lasts about 19.5 Earth days. At the moment, it is known that the planet receives 75% of the star's light relative to the Earth. The equivalent temperature of its surface is estimated to minus 39 degrees Celsius. So let's take down jackets. There is a high probability of seas and oceans of water in liquid form on this planet. Planet number 6, Glissae 1132b, is approximately 40 light years from the Sun. The planet is 1.8 times larger than the Earth and completes a full annual orbit in just 1.6 of our days. This particular exoplanet has an atmosphere. This is interesting since the planet is situated extremely close to its star and according to all calculations should have faded away long ago. The planet may have volcanic activity as it has an abnormally high amount of hydrocyanic acid up to 0.5%. And finally, the seventh and most distant world, M51 ULS-1b, one of the first officially confirmed objects with the status of a planet found outside of our Milky Way galaxy. The exoplanet was discovered in the Whirlpool galaxy, M51, located at a distance of 28 million light years. This exoplanet is in a binary system orbiting around two large objects, orbiting around a common center of gravity along with a massive companion star. The transit, which astronomers observed, lasted a total of about three hours, during which the recorded X-ray emissions from the star dropped to zero. This helped the researchers calculate that the object could be approximately the size of Saturn and orbits a neutron star or black hole at a distance that exceeds twice the distance from Saturn to our Sun. Oh well, we didn't talk about all of the interesting and fascinating worlds by far, but rather only about seven of them. Yes, we are looking towards the future with optimism and hope that the next generation of telescopes will be able to answer all the questions raised regarding new exoplanets. Kilometers, after which an active phase of studying this asteroid began. By June 27th, the craft had slowed down, approaching closer to Vesta all the time. And after another month, having already made almost two revolutions around the Sun, the craft reached Vesta and switched to an orbit around it at an altitude of 16,000 kilometers. All of July, the craft was engaged in photographing of the surface of Vesta. The probe confirmed just how large the Rhea Silvia crater in Vesta's southern hemisphere is, about 500 kilometers in diameter and 19 kilometers deep. 
The spacecraft also revealed that the mountain in the center of the huge crater, which the Hubble telescope had once captured, is more than two times the height of Mount Everest and is the second tallest mountain in the solar system, taking a back seat to the Martian Olympus. Upon closer inspection, the probe found a second large impact basin, now called Veninia, that is partially covered by the younger Rio Silvia basin. These two impacts changed the surface of Vesta and probably almost destroyed it. It remains a mystery how Vesta was able to survive such an extraordinary cataclysm. It is probable that numerous Class V asteroids, debris from the impact, were scattered in all directions. Giant impacts have created dozens of gorges encircling Vesta's equator that were revealed in the probe's images. Some of these canyons rival the Grand Canyon in size, reaching 465 kilometers in length and 4 kilometers in depth. The probe's data also reveals that the massive impact formed Rio Silvia a mere billion years ago. Thus, the surface of the southern hemisphere looks younger than the northern, where a tremendous number of craters have been preserved. Previously, researchers thought Vesta was a substantially dry object, but the Dawn space probe detected water-rich minerals on Vesta's surface that are associated with carbon-rich material. These materials were presumably taken to Vesta by asteroids or comets from the outer solar system that is richer in volatile substances. On September 5, 2012, having completed an extended mission, the craft broke free of Vesta's orbit and headed toward the next object of research, Ceres, a transition which took two and a half years. On March 6, 2015, having traversed a total of 4.9 billion kilometers at a distance of 60,600 kilometers from it, the craft was captured in the dwarf planet's gravitational field. And in early June, at a distance of 4,400 kilometers from the surface, the first photographs were already obtained. While the Vesta observations broadly supported the existing hypothesis and provided more details to fill in the gaps, less was known about Ceres. In fact, most of what we now know about the dwarf planet was provided by the Dawn spacecraft. Initial calculations suggested that Ceres might be separated into layers, although the composition of these layers was unknown before the probe. Given a low average density, Ceres was expected to have a large amount of water ice under its surface. However, the probe's measurements have confirmed that Ceres is actually composed of a rocky core and a crust of water ice covered by a dusty outer layer. Dawn also uncovered evidence of the presence of clothrate hydrates, a gas trapped in the crystalline structure of the water molecules that makes the amazing strength and low cross density of Ceres possible. While a large portion of Ceres is relatively smooth due to its semi-liquid subsurface layer of ice, the spacecraft found a large mountain that it wasn't able to see previously. This mountain is about 4 kilometers high and is called Ahuna Mons. Its well-defined domed shape, similar to volcanoes on Earth, suggests that it was likely formed due to cryovolcanic activity. Although cryovolcanism may exist in other icy worlds, Dawn's observations make Mount Ahuna the closest known cryovolcano in the solar system. Other observations by the Herschel Space Observatory have shown small amounts of water vapor around several portions of Ceres, which suggests that it may have a weak atmosphere or even ongoing cryovolcanic activity. The probe revealed that this gas could be due to solar particles colliding with the water ice on Ceres which is then released as vapor, resulting in a temporary, weak atmosphere. Spectroscopic data from Dawn also confirmed the presence of ammonia on the surface of the dwarf planet. Conditions in the main asteroid belt are too warm for ammonia to form, which requires much colder conditions and which raises questions about its origins. Ceres could have formed much further away in the colder, outer portion of the solar system before migrating to its current position, or ammonia could have been brought to Ceres by celestial bodies from the outer solar system. The spacecraft also confirmed the presence of carbonates on Ceres, 
which had been detected 10 years earlier using telescopic data. A great quantity of them once again confirmed the existence of an ocean early in Sirius history. This dwarf planet may even be warm enough to have a small amount of liquid water remaining below the surface. It's astonishing that for two centuries the dwarf planet Ceres and Vesta appear to be no more than dim points of light among the stars, until the Dawn mission provided us with detailed investigative portraits of these two complex and fascinating alien worlds. Amazing outer space and the remarkable beauty of the galaxies to which there is no end or brink. We invite you to become acquainted with the closest of them and to explore their unique features which are capable of capturing our imagination and are of particular interest to astronomy. Now then, the local group of galaxies, like its other neighboring groups of galaxies and more densely populated clusters of galaxies, is part of a mass concentration, the local supercluster of galaxies. This system has a diameter of about 100 million light years and a thickness of about 35. Its center is a massive cluster of galaxies in Virgo separated from us by a distance of 50 million light years. And the first to take this galactic baton is the third largest galaxy in size and mass in the local group, as well as being the closest unbarred spiral galaxy to the Milky Way. This refers to M33 or the Triangulum Galaxy in the constellation of the same name. It possesses the enormous black hole X7 which has a mass equal to about 16 times that of the Sun. It is one of the largest known stellar mass black holes. 
in addition to the Milky Way and its satellites, the Andromeda Galaxy, the closest giant spiral type barred galaxy to us, also with its satellites, which dominates the local group, also belongs to a friendly company of galaxies which stretch out for about 3 million light years in width. It is separated from us by a distance of 2.5 billion light years. It rightfully occupies a dominant position, since it is one and a half times more massive than our galaxy. But we will not dwell on it in greater detail, since the channel already has a separate video completely dedicated to this world. We continue our journey, and before us stretches galaxy NGC 5128 or Centaurus A, the closest lenticular galaxy with a polar ring to the Milky Way in the constellation of Centaurus. This is one of the brightest and closest to us of the neighboring galaxies. In terms of brightness, this galaxy ranks fifth after the Magellanic Clouds, the Andromeda Nebula and the Triangulum Galaxy. Before us is the irregular Wolf Landmark Mallet Galaxy, discovered in 1909 by Max Wolf. It is located in the constellation of Cetus at the edge of the local group. It's at a distance from us of about 3 million light years, experiencing tidal interaction from another member of the local group, the dwarf elliptical galaxy PGC 29194. Further is NGC 300, a spiral galaxy from a group of galaxies in the Sculpture constellation. This is the closest cluster of galaxies to us. It is located about 6.1 million light years from the Milky Way. Astronomers have ascertained that NGC 300 is larger than had been previously thought. It turns out that the galaxy belongs to a large rarefied outer disk of old stars, more than twice the size of any known before. Thus, the size of NGC 300 turned out to be 47,000 light years. We continue our journey and we see in front of us galaxy NGC 55, a galaxy in the southern hemisphere of the sky, located on the border of the Sculptor and Phoenix constellations, seen almost edge on. NGC 55 is an SBM, Bored Magellanic Spiral type dwarf galaxy, and is relatively close at a distance of 6.5 million light years. In the visible range, four concentrations with increased brightness can be noted, which are the largest globular clusters. The galactic nucleus is the most powerful radio source in the constellation. It belongs to the sculptor group of galaxies, where it is one of the largest. But in order to reach the galaxy Maffei too, you'd have to grow older over and over and over again since the galaxy is located at a distance of 12 million light years. Maffei 2 is a spiral galaxy located in the constellation of Cassiopeia. Most of the galaxy's infrared radiation comes from cosmic dust. This dust is found primarily within the spiral arms and has been shown to be associated with star formation. Four zero four. No, this isn't a fault in the matrix. It's the name of the next galaxy in front of you, the NGC 404 galaxy in the constellation of Andromeda. Due to its proximity to the bright star Mirage, which obstructs observation of NGC 404, the galaxy is called the Ghost of Mirage. The galaxy and the star are approximately seven minutes of arc apart. Thanks to this sort of neighborhood, the Ghost of Mirage is easy to find even with a small telescope. You just have to locate Mirage and the galaxy will also be in the field of view. Further is NGC 2403, a galaxy in the constellation of the Giraffe, part of the M81 group of galaxies. Most of the stars that populate this galaxy are old metal-poor stars 
about 12 billion years old, which arose in the early burst of star formation. But there are small groups of young, hot, blue stars. Galaxy NGC 2403 is part of the M81 group of galaxies. Visibly, the galaxy also contains blue open clusters, dark dust streaks, and a relatively small core glowing in the center. In addition to NGC 2403, the group also includes another 40 dwarf galaxies. We are arriving at the next incredible object, the Cigar Spiral Galaxy, or M82, in the constellation of Ursa Major. This is an object with fairly powerful star formation and a supermassive black hole in the center with a mass of as much as 30 million solar masses. Yet another amazing galaxy, PGC 45279, is a barred spiral galaxy, SBC, in the constellation of Centaurus. It looks quite similar to our galaxy, but X-ray observations show the presence of a safered quasar-like nuclei, probably containing an active supermassive black hole, and it's at a distance to us of 11.7 million light-years. And finally, the most distant object that we will get a view of today is the Caldwell Galaxy, Caldwell 5 or IC342. An intermediate type spiral galaxy in the constellation of Giraffe. It is located near the galactic plane, where the absorption of radiation by dust hampers observation of the galaxy. For the same reason, it is difficult to determine the exact distance to the galaxy. Current estimates place it at a distance of 17 million light-years. That wraps it up. Our short journey observing the most interesting galaxies in the local group has come to an end. The study of these objects is very useful and instructive for explaining the formation and history of the life of the most common place, the most abundant star systems in the universe.
Researchers mapped out the huge shell of gas that surrounds the Andromeda galaxy, and they were astonished to find that this thin, almost invisible halo of diffused plasma extends 1.3 million light years out from the galaxy, about halfway to our Milky Way, and for 2 million light years in other directions. This means that Andromeda's halo is already coming into contact with the halo of our galaxy. They also discovered that the halo has a layered structure with two main layers and separate shells of gas. Understanding the huge gas halos surrounding galaxies is of crucial importance. This reservoir of gas contains the material for future star formation in a galaxy as well as the remnants from events such as supernovas. It is filled with clues to the past and future evolution of the galaxy. It became clear that the inner shell, which stretches out about half a million light years, is much more complex and dynamic, while the outer shell is smoother and hotter. This difference is likely the result of the activity of supernovas in the galaxy's disk having a more direct effect on the inner halo. However, since we live within the Milky Way, it is not easy to deduce the profile shape of the halo of our own galaxy. It is presumed that the halo of Andromeda and the Milky Way must be very similar, since these two galaxies are also incredibly alike, both in relative size and in appearance. As modeling of the movement of the galaxies has indicated, they are both on the path to collision and will emerge forming a giant elliptical galaxy in about 5 billion years. But their weak halos have indeed already begun to come into contact with each other. Thus, we can say that the merger, although almost insignificant, has already begun. And there is no force that can stop this merging. But the question then becomes, what will happen to the galaxies if they are viewed from the side? In a collision, large galaxies absorb smaller ones entirely and it practically does not affect their structure. However, when galaxies are close in size like the Milky Way and the Andromeda, the collision causes their structure to collapse. A number of stars will be ejected from the galaxies. Others will be swallowed up by the merging of supermassive black holes. At the same time, the beautiful spiral structure of both galaxies will be disrupted and a new, giant, elliptical galaxy will form in their place. These kinds of mergers could bring about a small upsurge in the formation of stars. The collision of galaxies forms vast hydrogen clouds, which can trigger a series of gravitational collapses. In addition to that, such mergers can be responsible for the premature aging of galaxies, as most of the gas turns into stars. After a burst of star formation, the galaxies run out of fuel. The youngest and hottest stars explode as supernovae, and all the remains are the old, cold, red stars which live for a very long time. This is why giant elliptical galaxies, the result of collisions, contain so many red stars and so few active star-forming regions. By the way, the merging of black holes will cause orbital energy to be transferred to the stars, which will subsequently move the stars to higher orbits over millions of years. When two black holes come within a light year of each other, they will start emitting gravitational waves. The gas caught up by the combined black hole could create a glowing quasar or active nucleus at the center of the reformed galaxy. And finally, an effect of the merger of black holes can be to give a good cosmic kick to some stars, which will become genuine castaways, taking their planets with them. Who knows, maybe the universe will cast us off. Well, the collision of galaxies is an event of truly grandiose proportions. These kinds of cataclysms will happen to any of them as soon as they inadvertently graze each other. In some cases, the galaxies merely brush each other in passing. In others, direct impacts follow, like a head-on collision of cars, 
decisively changing the appearance of both objects forever. How will our galaxy look like in billions of years? Time will tell, but it will be a completely different, unrecognizable world. You've probably heard statements like these. The pilot is experiencing a force of 7 Gs or gravitational forces. Or the acceleration force was 9 Gs or perhaps even more. Indeed, you yourself regularly experience stressful forces in everyday life. Well, that is not only emotional but also physical. How do G forces affect a person on Earth? How are they felt in space? and even at faster than light speeds? Let's try to answer these questions. To begin with, as always, you should understand what G-forces are and how they occur. From the definition, it follows that a G-force is the ratio of the absolute value of linear acceleration caused by non-gravitational forces to the standard acceleration of free fall at the surface of the Earth. Being the ratio of two accelerations, g-force is a dimensionless value, but is often stated in units of the standard acceleration of free fall, g or gravity, which is 9.8 tenth of a meter per second squared. This represents how many times greater the force of inertia is in relation to the usual force of gravity acting upon a body under conditions of the Earth at sea level. And the more abrupt the maneuver, the stronger the g-force. 
The fact is, the human body is able to tolerate accelerations of higher than 9 Gs for brief durations. But very few are capable of enduring them for more protracted periods of time. If it's only for brief moments, we humans can handle much higher G-forces without suffering serious injury. The record for enduring momentarily high G-forces belongs to Eli Beating, who rode backwards on a special rocket-powered sled in 1958 and literally took a force of 82.6 Gs in the chest when the sled accelerated to 55 km per hour in one-tenth of a second. Beating lost consciousness, but got away with only small bruises on his back, demonstrating the incredible capabilities of the body. John Ivanovich Gridunov, an equipment tester for the Soviet space program, was also involved in numerous experiments that verified the limits of the human body. They even called him the ground-based astronaut. While testing a pressure suit, he underwent a number of experiments in a high-altitude pressure chamber, including uncontrolled decompression. During a simulated emergency landing, he experienced an impact force of 50 Gs, as well as having withstood a force of 19 Gs in the region of thoracic spine on a centrifuge. Even the Orion spacecraft won't be able to deliver our full velocity potential. But let's glance into the distant future when spaceships will be able to travel extremely fast, thousands of times faster than with today's technology. Let's remember that light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. Consequently, if we assume that we will be able to overcome known technological limitations and build hyperspeed spacecraft, our delicate bodies made mostly of water will have to contend with the new risks that will result from such high-speed travel. If humans do acquire the ability to travel faster than light, the potential dangers that may be encountered are the discovery of a mind-boggling paradigm or the detection of wormholes in the current physical state. Even if we begin speeding up to 40,000 km per hour, the acceleration should be gradual. After all, it is specifically acceleration that affects the magnitude of the g-force. Hypothetically, you can speed a ship with a person aboard up to the speed of light. Let's just try to ignore the laws of physics here and make believe. But the question's not with the terminal velocity or final speed, but in how quickly it gathers that speed. If in a year our passenger remains safe at a speed of one kilometer per second, even with a moderate increase in acceleration, that person won't have enough of his average life expectancy left to do it. If by chance he did achieve such a speed, contrary to all the laws of physics, he should feel no worse than he would being in an airplane. Having said that, if the acceleration from zero to speed of light took just a second, well, that'd be better not to imagine. Rapid acceleration and deceleration can be fatal for a human. Bodily injuries during road accidents occur during the process of the sudden drop in speed from tens of kilometers per hour to zero in a fraction of a second. It's all about the property of the universe known as inertia, as a result of which an object with mass resists change to its state of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion
are we alone in the universe? Individuality, ingenuity, and uniqueness are those qualities which describe the distinguishing characteristics of our species. Complex cells, organs, and organ systems that interact with each other by the way of more than 100 billion neurons in our body. Man, unlike animals, can think logically, feel, and even plan. But then, how are we unique and one of a kind? The truth is that long before the appearance of our planet, thousands and even millions of similar star systems already existed. And to the present day, these worlds are located not only in nearby galaxies, but in the Milky Way galaxy itself. In fact, the cosmos is so immense that life could have originated in millions of other cases besides on our blue planet. Let's try to understand one of the most extraordinary and fascinating mysteries of modern cosmology, and we will try to learn the answer to the question, are we alone in the universe? Perhaps we will begin our story with the Fermi paradox, which is the absence of visible traces of the activity of alien civilizations, which would have had to already settle throughout the universe over the billions of years of its development. Just imagine that any of us right now can look up in the night sky and see thousands of small stars in it. There are up to 400 billion of them in the Milky Way alone, and a fair amount of them have their own planetary system. In practically each of these systems, there is a so-called habitable zone, in which the odds are there is a planet similar to our Earth, and consequently, an intelligent civilization. How is it that with such a high percent of probability of extraterrestrial life, we still haven't noticed a single sign? Nevertheless, the diversity and infinite number of stars with their own systems gives us hope that something does indeed exist out there. Therefore, let's get back to the search. In 1961, radio astronomer Francis Drake undertook the task of estimating the likely number of extraterrestrial civilizations that are ready to make contact with us. He proposed a simple mathematical formula which calculated the percentage of the probability of the existence of intelligent life in the universe. The formula is seen like this. The provocative power of Drake's formula lay in its obviousness. There is simply nothing to disagree with at first glance. Despite the fact that the controversy surrounding the Drake's formula hasn't ceased for more than 60 years, a final solution has not yet been found. Given the absence of any signals whatsoever from nearby star systems, it's safe to assume that any civilization which becomes technologically advanced is at great risk of inevitable self-destruction. For example, because of nuclear war, ecological disaster, or war with elves. Thus, such a civilization has very little time to be noticed. However, if that doesn't happen, any civilization sooner or later must attain a level 1,000 times greater than ours, and then they will see us as similar. But further, it is even more interesting. In 1964, a method of determining the technological development of civilizations was proposed by the Soviet astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, resulting in it being called the Kardashev scale. Using this method, the scientist hypothesized what these kinds of advanced races could be like, classifying them according to the amount of efficient energy of which they are able to make use. The scientists supposed that those civilizations which are able to use the energy available on their planet can be classified as Type 1. Type 2 civilizations can use all the energy emitted by their main star, and Type 3 is able to use the energy of the entire galaxy together with that of the Death Star. According to the judgment of astronomer Carl Sagan, we are about 70% of the way to Type 1 civilization and can hypothetically reach this level in two centuries. It is worth mentioning the zoo hypothesis, about which astrophysicist John Ball spoke. The zoo hypothesis 
proposes that aliens do in fact exist, and they even know where we are, but because of some intrinsic rules, or out of preference, they keep us in the dark. And finally, let's consider the theory of the dark forest. This theory has its origin in a popular science fiction book, written by Liu Sushin. His ideas can be easily applied to encounters between humanity and civilizations from other planets. In his work, Liu Sushin writes that all forms of life have one concern, the struggle for survival, and the real intentions of alien life forms remain unknown. It is impossible to establish in advance whether the aliens you come into contact with will be able to destroy you if they are given the opportunity. In his book, Sushin compares the universe to a dark forest. Civilizations are like forest huntsmen, gliding between the trees and looking like ghosts. They are afraid to make loud sounds, their movements are cautious, and their breathing is almost inaudible. This watchfulness is essential to their survival, as there are many other similar types of hunters in the forest, and if you encounter them, the safest choice is to open fire and eliminate the potential danger. When we look at it from this perspective, it seems reasonable to assume that others are deliberately hiding from us and do not respond to the signals we send. Anyway, take a look at this picture. It is an image of a small region of space compiled from data taken from the Hubble Space Telescope. The image covers a very small area and contains approximately 10,000 galaxies. Just think about these numbers. It seems that we simply do not have the right to call ourselves the only and unique ones in our universe purely because we can't possibly know. Indeed, so far, our radio signals are flying away without a trace into the distant depth of outer space. But who knows, perhaps we'll still be waiting for an answer until its time comes. In the relatively small galaxy of CAD 947, 
which is 22 billion light years from Earth, a gargantuan black hole with an abnormally large mass was discovered that is capable of capturing an enormous number of stars along with their solar systems. Currently, it is believed that there are only three types of black holes, starting from the smallest to the largest. In front of us is the first view, the primordial or relic black holes. These are the smallest black holes whose formation took place in the early stages of the development of the universe. It is thought that clusters of matter, which appear due to irregularities of the Big Bang, could collapse into the state of black holes, while the rest of the matter expanded. A black hole is not always something that is very large and heavy. Researchers suspect that the size of some primordial black holes may be significantly smaller than the size of a proton. The second view. These are stellar mass black holes. They originate in the aftermath of the life cycle of massive stars. Make note that the black holes are formed only from stars with a mass that exceeds the mass of the Sun by 20 to 40 times. Another alternative for the formation of a stellar mass black hole is gas accretion. Accretion is the accumulation of matter from the surrounding space into a cosmic body. Gas falls into a neutron star until the mass of the latter exceeds the maximum possible mass for neutron stars. In such an instance, the neutron star will collapse into a low-mass black hole. And finally, the third type, supermassive black holes. It is assumed that these objects are located in the centers of galaxies. Their mass can be up to 10 to 9th power the mass of the Sun. Among them is a massive hole in the center of the Milky Way with a weight of 4 million solar masses. It is believed to have formed from a giant gas cloud that compressed into dark matter or alternatively is part of the first generation of heavy stars that collapsed into primordial black holes and then merged into one supermassive black hole. There also exists a hypothesis according to which supermassive black holes are located in the center of quasars. The understudied and most distant of those cosmic objects that can be observed from the Earth. Quasars are galactic nuclei and have a black hole in their center. Quasars are incredibly luminous and small in size and they can be observed at a distance of 10 billion light years. These objects emit a tremendous amount of energy in all of the regions of the electromagnetic spectrum and especially in the infrared region. It is precisely this type of massive black hole that interests us. However, as a rule, a commonly accepted theory of the formation of black holes of this sort of mass, similar to that in the center of galaxy CAD 947, does not yet exist. Galaxy CID 947 is a most ordinary galaxy. The total mass of its stars is just 45 billion times greater than that of our Sun. For comparison, this figure for the Milky Way, which is considered a fairly small spiral galaxy, is 64 billion solar masses. But at the same time, the mass of the supermassive black hole at its center turned out to be inordinately large. According to the calculations, its mass exceeds that of the Sun by almost 7 billion times, which makes this object one of the largest black holes in the early universe, and makes it the leader in the weight category of galaxies of this size. This sort of a finding completely contradicts the well-established theories about the growth of black holes in the centers of galaxies, which postulate that the stellar megapolises and the heavyweights living in their centers grow approximately the same rate and that their masses always maintain the same ratio of 1 to 500. In the case of CID 947, the black hole is only 8 times lighter than the entire galaxy. 
This means that it was growing much faster than the rest of the stellar megapolis, literally eating up almost all of the gas that fell into CID 947 from the intergalactic environment, which was relatively rich and dense compared to today. There is yet another oddity. CID 947 has already reached the limits of its growth, but new stars continue to be born in the surrounding galaxy. Until now, this was also considered impossible, since the radiation of the black hole and the gas flows surrounding it in theory should prevent the birth of new stars. It turns out to be a strange paradox, since a black hole both devours stars and facilitates their birth. 